On today's Switch to Linux, we want to talk a little bit about Microsoft forcing upon us automatic saving to their cloud. And uh, I have some thoughts about this, and uh, they go back a little bit deeper than you might think. So it's kind of interesting to see what these companies have all done to us. Stay tuned. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux, where we like to talk about free and open source software and uh, other things like that. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we do want to talk about this new default on Microsoft Office that is going to start auto-saving everything you do, even on the desktop applications, directly into your cloud account. Now, uh, this isn't something that just started with Microsoft. In fact, I kind of blame the problem they're trying to solve more on Google with Google Docs, which kind of hit the scene as a, a more um, available option first. Of course, Google Docs is still a free option that we have. But what I noticed is when I was writing my book, Happy Holidays, and I was working on it with a co-author who was in high school at the time, and uh, we, we were sitting down at tables and he would be working on his part and I'd be working on my part. And, uh, you know, we get, he gets to the end and I have him typing on a word processor on a computer for probably the first time doing it in that format. I'm like, Hey, did you save the file? He's like, what do you mean? Save the file. Because he was raised on Google Docs and school accounts that there is no save button. Everything you do is just automatically there, automatically in the cloud, automatically synced into your account. And so we've shifted in this world where our younger generation doesn't have a sense of what is a file and that you need to save it or where does it go or how do you find it? They just automatically are tuned into log in and there's this giant mirage of documents that you must just figure out which one it is. Organization doesn't come easy to that younger generation until they take forth an effort to try. And so this fast forwards us, of course, we are now so used to these cloud applications that uh, Microsoft is, and I've mentioned this before, Microsoft is slowly moving towards wanting to only offer its Office suite through the cloud integration system, the Office 365 integration or whatever they're calling it nowadays. They are still having the offline applications, but of course, this push into Windows 11 is also this push into always connected, always authenticated, always online. And so even the desktop based applications are now having a toggle switched, which will change the default of your application from saving it to your computer to saving it to the cloud. Now, you can still go back and you can change that around. But what I find is interesting here is that they have started by pushing people into the always online, always authenticated, always you log into your computer with your Microsoft account. Then they're trying to push everything always into this OneDrive. And now if you open up Microsoft Office, it's going to want to auto save that into their cloud account, which means every document you build, whether you intend it to be on the cloud or not, is there. And don't forget, Microsoft does have access to see everything you do. And there's questions about, are these documents being used to train AI or check up on you or other things like that? And of course, anything in that account is easily accessible to anybody that wants to investigate you, whether that of this administration or the next administration. So let's have a look at what the articles uh, mentions here from Malwarebytes. So from Malwarebytes... Microsoft wants to automatically save your Word docs to the cloud. Now, this is rolling out first in Microsoft Word, it is rolling out first on the Microsoft Insiders. They are going to be moving this as the basic default on all Microsoft Office accounts through Word and then eventually moving it out, expanding it also to the default behavior in Excel and in PowerPoint. So what they say is they proudly announce proudly announced. Look at that. Uh, we are modernizing the ways files are created and stored in Word for Windows. Now you don't have to worry about saving your documents. <laughs> there you go. There's more brain cells that'll drip out of our heads, by the way. Um, anything new you create will be saved automatically to OneDrive or your preferred cloud destination. Isn't that interesting? Your preferred cloud destination. Um, not my preferred computer destination, not keeping my files only on my computer. Of course, they want everything you do on their cloud. Why not? 
Now, I do have to bring up this gripe again because I've mentioned it before. Nearly every one of these tech articles that I pull from, including this one here at Malwarebytes Labs, reads more like press releases than journalism. It's interesting because journalism qu pushes back against this. It questions why. There is a tiny minuscule amount of this in this article, but almost none. It's all like, hey, look at what Microsoft's doing. Isn't this cool? It's like, is, there's no pushback. And we need to see pushback. It's how, you know, we develop these brain. We, we bring the brain cells back that have leaked out by us not having to worry about the arduous process of pushing save. I mean, really. The options... Uh, this feature, uh, the options this feature provides already existed, but Microsoft is changing the default save location on Windows. Uh, and Word is just a start. Similar functionality is coming to Excel for Windows and PowerPoint for Windows later this year. For those of us who have lost hours of work because we forgot to press save. Okay, let me ex let me address this one, Malware Bytes. Please put on your journalist hat, Malware Bytes. All right. If you have worked Hours and hours in lost document. It means that you have started a document and you've never saved it the first time, which should be your habit, provided you know you don't lose brain cells by not having to worry about saving your documents. You open a document, you should first save it. I don't even do that stuff. I create a new document, name it, and then open it. Why? Because even in Word. When you have a document with a name that is saved to your local disk, it will autosave every couple of minutes. You're not going to lose hours and hours of your work. Unless you're opening up the application, creating new document, doing hours and hours and hours of work, and never doing the very painstakingly difficult task of pushing the save button. Establishing a file name. No, no. They're going to get rid of that. And they're going to put everything out in the cloud. Those of us have lost hours of work because we forgot to press save while we were still writing. This could be a blessing at times, but we can already enable auto save and choose OneDrive as an option. So what's new? Uh, so they're addressing that, that these were options that we had. The change here is that now by default, Word will save all new documents automatically to the cloud, even before you assign a file name. So it'll just create a timestamp document, timestamp, whatever else. It removes a step users had to manually initiate the painstaking process of setting a file name. <laughs> All right, so whether you save the file locally or in the cloud, until now, autosave actually on activate only after you manually save to OneDrive. Now Word creates a new document directly in the cloud and turns on autosave immediately from the start. And the advantages are clear. No more forgetting to save. And you can share your document with someone else for collaboration purposes. Also means you can work on the document from any computer as long as you can log in. And this, of course, raises the other concern that I have been raised, uh, I've been bringing up lately. Microsoft is now creating, uh, forcing all new accounts by default are passwordless, which means they're tying the login to your account to that particular computer. They're tying it to a pass key. Okay, they're disabling that, which, by the way, means you will not be able to log in to your Microsoft account by default on any computer other than your computer with your TPM module. Are you aware of that? So you need to stop and think, which steps do you need to do to log into your Microsoft account from somewhere else? Now, you can set up pass keys through a YubiKey or the uh, only key, and I did a video about that in the past. So you can use those particular steps. And uh, the reality here is, though, is that what they're trying to do is they're trying to narrow it down. They're trying to simplify it so much the average person can't log into their account. All right. And then tying it to that computer and then now sending everything in the cloud all for, hey, this is so good for collaboration. But, you know, there's not a lot of pushback. Here is a. Uh, here is uh, a little bit here. The last advantage could also be the pitfall. Anyone with your credentials can access all the documents, even though I realize this may sound alarmist. <laughs> How alarmist of you. I have to point out the breaches do happen. Credentials get stolen and more documents will be found when this setting is the default. So that is certainly true. Uh, so users are afraid that with AI integration, saving documents to the cloud, the work will be used to train AI. Or is that uh, part of Microsoft's scheme to sell more cloud storage? The 
could be either one. So they do have some uh, settings in here, how you can toggle these on, toggle these off, set default locations. And uh, of course, I would be a huge advocate of saying, do not put things into the cloud unless they need to be in the cloud. That's my default. I do not keep stuff in the cloud unless it needs to be in the cloud. So of course, I am a huge advocate of not even using Microsoft Office at all, because for the vast vast percentage of you, you can use LibreOffice instead. Entirely offline and saves your documents offline and bonus, they don't cram AI into it. Isn't that wonderful? And uh, the cool thing is no matter what system you are using, you have the option to download um, uh, LibreOffice. Now it's going to be in your repo no matter what. You can find it on Flatpak. I believe they have Snap versions as well. Here's an RPM uh, versions. Uh, I'm not sure why it's suggesting RPMs, but uh, here's your Debs. You have your Apple Silicon. You have your Intel. You have your Windows uh, uh, Arch 64. You have a Windows 64 bit. So you literally have every operating system everywhere you have. And uh, as I said, they do also have, I believe they have a, a snap version. They have an app image. They have a flat pack. There is no excuse to not be using LibreOffice. You can use this literally everywhere. What functionality does it give you? 99.9% .9 of Microsoft Office and a lot of that stuff, it does better. Okay. There's some things Office will do that LibreOffice can't. Those upper 0.1% of things. Okay. And uh, for the most part though, LibreOffice is going to replace all of these office suites that's going to do it for free without automatically changing all your settings, without automatically sending things into the cloud. Now, can you use this on the cloud? The reality is, yes, you can. Uh, so this is a NextCloud all-in-one instance. This is actually my new NextCloud. I'm migrating away from my older one, which is uh, uh, older, and I can't upgrade it anymore on the server it's at. So I established a new one using the very, very simple uh, NextCloud all-in-one. And uh, this is, of course, our next science fiction short story, which is coming out. And look at this. It is all cloud-enabled. This is all online. I can do this collaboratively. I can send this to other people. I can also go ahead and I can download the file as well. So here's if I want to download it, I can go under ODT, RTF, DOCX, DOC, EPUB, PDF, HTML, uh, and there's uh, PDF options there, another one. Uh, so save as a PDF. There's a couple other options we would have. So there's a lot of things that you can do inside of this if you do need these online cloud collaborative and especially think about how much is it going to cost you to run a Microsoft Office instance. You know, if you need to do that. Well, if you do need the online collaborative, you can actually use this. Um, and this one here, I think, is $18 a month, but it can support up to a dozen or two users. It means it's a really good unified solution for a family circumstance. I think you can probably get away with going cheaper as well, uh, but uh, I just kind of went with... Um, Went with this one here, mostly for the size. I have 60 gigabytes of space. Now, I do have a video about how you can set this up. And uh, we did this video uh, last year or maybe almost two years ago, I think it was. And um, what this covers here, a nice, beautiful uh, out on the notes application there. Um, let me mute that there real quick. So um, I kind of explained here what, uh, you know, why you want to use it. But then if you go over here, this is all set up on DigitalOcean. And under the marketplace, we're just typing in our... Uh, uh, typing in our next cloud so you can search for a number of different things in there and uh, under the next cloud all in one and this is all set up on an ubuntu server on docker and it will it is the easiest type i've been running and managed managing one of these for uh somebody for a couple of years now and uh it has worked completely flawlessly so now we're using it for administration and organization on um uh not only on on my own office documents. I use it for uploading, sharing files. I use it for some collaborative work. We're also using this more collaboratively with um, uh, with some other organizations I'm doing some work with now so that we have all the infrastructure without relying on Google Docs. Like I said, the one I'm running right now personally is on the $18 a month, which works well. 
I could probably go down with the um, with the twelve uh, uh, the twelve dollars a month. The reason I really went with the eighteen is because you do have it's kind of hard to see here in the video, but you do have two CPUs available with that. You have uh, sixty gigabytes of disk space to share between everybody. But once you set it up. Uh, you literally just go in there and uh, click the button, and you need to forward your i uh, your domain. I think I did over here. So you just forward the domain over. Here's uh, the domain. I just entered in the IP address that DigitalOcean gave us, and as soon as you do that, um, you can come over here and just get logged right on into your brand new Nextcloud instance. And this comes with it, all of the collaboration stuff that you need. It comes with the ability to manage your contacts and calendars without giving that up to Google, managing your documents in this offline format or uh, online format rather, the is full collaborative, but I can still use LibreOffice. I can do things offline and I'm not forced to put stuff in the cloud because the reality is you shouldn't have everything in the cloud. There's not a reason to have everything in the cloud. You know, I'm going to work on my budget sheet on Excel, that does not need to be in the cloud. You don't need to be putting that type of stuff out there in, in, uh, in the cloud, uh, cloud resources. So I will encourage you, if you are using Microsoft Office, please look to see if LibreOffice can help you, especially if you do not need the online collaboration work. If you do need the online collaboration work, there are other options. Uh, you can do the NextCloud instance. I think you can, I think, uh, only office has some online collaboration stuff that is a little bit cheaper as well. I would definitely steer you towards only office over Microsoft office, even though I do personally prefer LibreOffice myself. So there is uh, what our thoughts are. I want to bring that to your attention. Make sure that you are not sending your documents to your OneDrive account. If you didn't already uh, know that uh, double check those settings, make sure it's not automatically doing that so that you can maintain control of your documents and definitely consider, even if you can't switch to it full time, I would highly encourage anybody to install LibreOffice office on your computer so you can play around with it and see what it has to offer that might mean you're doing better office document work with the free alternative rather than going with Microsoft Office, which is still a paid and a proprietary system. And even now we're seeing that they're trying to force you to put all of your documents on the internet. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. I will have a copy of that uh, Nextcloud video here to close out with. And I do have an affiliate code for DigitalOcean if you are interested in trying that out, tlm.li forward slash doh. Uh, that'll give you uh, some credit to uh, give you, I think, $200 in credit to play around with it. So you could literally use that for a uh, period of time to see how well this works without uh, exhausting, uh, exhausting a lot of resources to see if it works for you. So that thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.